the spending cuts uh, that the governor recommended will mostly impact Bozeman in our technology fund, which is a fund that uh, we use to purchase um, technology, uh, infrastructure, software, equipment, that type of thing. Um, and uh, this year, uh, basically, we were cut in that in that same area by about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And then the um, further reduction that's being requested would be about another one hundred and forty thousand. So like a total of 290,000 and specifically in our technology budget. Um, we have a technology levy that the voters have approved over the years and we have the ability to go to the voters for more, but um, we don't see that as happening immediately. Um, if these cuts are not restored at a later date, then that's, log that's probably where it's headed is okay, we can only live a few years without, you know, the money we need for our technology, otherwise we really start losing ground, and then at that point, we would ha the board would have to make the decision, okay, are we going to go to the voters to make up this reduction? All indications from folks are that um, these cuts are temporary, and I, I don't know, I mean, if you look at, I, I don't know what they know that, that I don't know, but they're hoping that the, the economy of the state will change and then and rebound and and the tax collections will increase again and then and then we'll be able to recover these the, these cuts. So they're they're looking at it as as a temporary situation. So if that's true, you know we can we can survive it and we'll and we'll be fine. Um, there are there are other proposals out there that uh, we've heard talked about that are more permanent reductions in school funding that would be much much harder for us to deal with. Uh, they, would, they would actually mean reductions in our you know, number of teachers or actual instruction, uh, immediate impact on that type of thing, which, which again is, a, is much harder to deal with. Um, we're hopeful that uh, either the governor's proposal or there's another proposal that the um, state superintendent of public instruction made late yesterday that basically just shifts the timing of payments so it requires us to use our reserves more for for paying things currently it, it delays payments that we receive from the state again we can we can live with that 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 would be a workable solution as well so our hope is that one of those two kind of becomes uh, the solution um, if they go to the extreme of reducing the state funding in our general fund permanently, then that's, that's kind of worst case scenario and we're hoping that, that it doesn't go there. But there are some folks talking about that. Um, I haven't seen any formal bills or anything to, in that regard. So we receive state money for um, career and technical education classes. And last year, the amount we received was about $70,000 last year. This year that was already cut by about $35,000. It was cut a little bit more than in half. Um, those cuts will continue. So the funding level, at, at least in the current proposals, will continue next year at the same level we received this year, which is half of what we received last year. Um, those are direct, uh, those monies are used directly in the classroom. Therefore, you know, all of those all of those uh, classes are very hands-on, and they, they require a lot of supplies and materials to to do the to do the instruction. You know, saw blades and you know welding rods and all of those materials, and so that's a direct hit on those on the money that those those career and technical education classes have. Um, they they saw that reduction this year, and then that's going to continue into next year. So. That's correct. Um, to, uh, technology, career and technical education, and then the other area uh, is in our transportation, our transportation funding. So, the transportation funding basically comes from the local taxpayers and the state, and the state is proposing to reduce their share, which requires us to pass that on to the local taxpayers. It's not a huge pass pass through, but it, you know, it, it's an increase in local the the local burden 
in order for us to continue to the same services in the transportation, which by and large are mandated by state law. So there isn't a lot we can do there to reduce them. However, having said that, we are in a bid year for our transportation contract. We, we contract out our transportation services to first student currently. We're in the last year of a five-year contract and we're out to bid right now. So in a best case scenario, the bids will come in very competitively and maybe we'll, we'll save a little money there and we wouldn't have to pass anything on to the taxpayers. It's all, it's too early to, to know that, so. What about uh, mental health or uh, disability? Are those so, going to be cut? Well, so I'm trying to get a handle on that actually. I don't know. The school-based services for mental health um, is really an important, again, we contract that out and our providers actually do the billing for to Medicaid and, and receive the reimbursement. And right now there's no cost to the school district for that. But if they get cut substantially and they're unable to provide those services, then it could have a significant impact on our budget. But um, we don't have a good feel right now for, for what, that, what that might look like. Will you uh, send a representative from the school to give their two cents on this budget cut proposal? So usually what we do is monitor individual bills or individual proposals. So um, once we know the timing of hearings and that type of thing, it's likely that um, one of us may have to drive to Helena and, and testify. We haven't made that decision yet. Um, and generally there's three of us that kind of usually share those duties, the superintendent and myself and, and Mike Waterman. And, uh, but we haven't decided on which, if any of us, are going to be up there. We also have uh, the Montana School Boards Association, School Administrators of Montana, Montana uh, Association of School Business Officials. So we have folks in Helena that represent us and we're in constant contact with them of, you know, what the impact of these proposals are on us and, you know, giving them feedback on, 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 on potential testimony. So, you know, we're, we've got those connections in place. So, like I said, I think, I think the governor has put forth a, a reasonable plan, and I think the state superintendent has put together a reasonable plan. And I hope that one of those plans basically is, is, is the one that, that comes through. It would be best for schools. You know, there's a lot of other, obviously the state is in, is in a bad situation right now with their budget, and so there's a lot of uh, agencies, there's a lot of things that, that are going to be affected, and I think it's important that, that we all kind of, you know, take our, take our share of that burden. And, and, you know, everyone always wants to protect their turf and protect their area, but I think we do need to look at it as a, as a statewide problem, and, and everyone uh, shares in that. And I, I think that the proposals that we're seeing so far, you know, we can live with. They're, they're, they're fairly temporary. Uh, hopefully we get over this, um, over this hump and, and things get better, you know, for the state budget and we can, you know, move forward. What about those uh, taxpayers that are already paying a substantial yeah. increase in taxes? Right. Now you're, now the, this proposal is saying, well, it's going to be going on to Gallatin County taxpayers right. to subsidize yeah. this income. I, I, I feel that's a, I think that's a very legitimate um, uh, argument, concern. We, we, every decision that we make, we try, to, we try to weigh the impact to the taxpayers and try to, you know, uh, we've, we've passed, you know, bond issues. We passed a significant bond issue to, to build high school too. Um, they've been supportive for other bond issues and so we do not take that for granted and so I think moving forward with whatever solution that is is presented or that comes out of the legislature I think our then it falls to our school board to say okay here's the situation now we've got a choice we can we can increase taxes and and keep the services fairly level or we can we can cut services and keep the the tax fairly level and as we work through the rest of the year that's what that's what we'll be looking at and i and i think our board i know our board takes that very seriously and it's a i think it's a very legitimate um concern because some folks you know uh, 
the taxes they're paying are significantly more than they were two or three years ago, and it's a it's a burden on them. And there's folks that are on fixed incomes, and they would love to stay in their homes, and all of those things, you know, that we have to take into consideration.